Welcome, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. It's about how you navigate with GPS and how geocaching works. We're first going to cover how sound waves move. Um, waves move in concentric circles. It's kind of like throwing a rock into a puddle. Just imagine the little ripples that are moving out. All waves move the same, including electromagnetic waves such as the ones used by satellites and radio towers. Um, they also move at the speed of light. Why that's important is because if you know for how long they've traveled, because you know how fast they're going, you know how far you are from its source. All right, so how do I know where I am? Well, if you have one station telling you that you know you're this far from it, you could be anywhere along its circle. If you had a second to it, where the spots intersect and there will be two, is where you likely are. But if you had a third station in there and you figure out where you are, you will get a precise location. That is called triangulation. Now satellites use four satellites to give you a precise location not just three and they call this process trilateration it is very accurate all right so the next thing we're going to look at is going to be the globe so the globe is divided in half usually that's somebody at by the equator that's a zero degree the equator is an example of a line of latitude and lines of latitude are the horizontal lines that we use to separate this globe now you start at the equator and imagine having a protractor there 90 degrees being the north pole uh, 45 degrees being the point where is the halfway point you have 75 and you can have any degree that you want since there's a north and a south hemisphere you have 90 degrees north as well as 90 degrees south and everything in between And the opposite of lines of latitude, or I guess what complements them, is going to be lines of longitude. Uh, these go vertically, and the the line that divides the east and the west is called the prime meridian. It runs through Greenwich, England. There's 360 meridians, 180 on the west, 180 on the east side of the globe. Uh, if you take the prime meridian and the equator, you can divide a globe in four quadrants. So when you go on the internet to download your your uh, coordinates you put them in your gps the gps will then tell you where you are and then you can figure out where your caches are and you can keep doing this for as long as you want the only thing that you're going to be cautioned when you're uh, geocaching is to watch out for muggles and all that muggles are is just a term given to people that do not uh, geocache they they just simply see geocacher finding these little treasures and then they try to go and steal it so it's best to avoid them, or best to just be very cautious when you're out there. Now, how do you use a GPS receiver to find a cache? Well, the first thing you need to do is to download the cache locations, and these are found on the internet. Uh, the second thing you need to do is to program your GPS receiver uh, to take you to that cache. Um, the way you do it with these receivers is there's a where to uh, app on the menu, and you just enter the coordinates that you get from the internet, and then you just navigate yourself. So the coordinates could look something like this. Um, and you just punch them in and then what happens is that will tell you where in relation to you that is and it's very precise you, you can't miss it so in conclusion geocaching is a real world treasure hunt that you can do you can do it anywhere you go you use a GPS receiver and um, it's just a lot of fun thank you very much for watching this video